Thanks a lot for joining in, guys. This is part two of my big uh, iOS navigation application review. In part one, we had a look at uh, the HEMA Explorer app, the HEMA for wheel drive app, and MudMap 3. So in this episode now, we're going to look into Billy Goat, Aventa Map, and Memory Maps. So stay tuned and keep watching. As in the first episode, that is a fairly long video. So in the description on YouTube, you will find shortcuts to the different apps so you don't have to watch everything because it's going to be in half an hour video at least to get through all of them. Let's get into it. In Billy Goat, you really have very little features. It looks a bit like a beta software. So you have your account, you have your pins, you have your tracks, backup and restore, okay, and map updates. No map updates available. So to drop a pin in Billy Goat, you're gonna keep your finger pressed and let it go, insert pin, big red, here it is. So if I go on that pin now, go on info, then I can view it on the map, that is good. It, I can show whether it's visible or not, that is also great. I can share it, it shows me longitude, latitude, but I can't change any icons or whatever, but I seem to be able to use uh, directions. Okay, that allows me Billy Goat, Google Maps, Apple Maps. That's not bad. That's a pretty good feature, I reckon. Billy Goat is supposed to have street search, but that doesn't work too well. Quite a few locations couldn't be found. Let me look for Kent Street in Sydney, Kentucky. So it doesn't show Kent Street in Sydney CBD. Um, yeah, I don't want to go here. So really... Do another search. Yeah, this it finds. That is something. You can then get directions to it. Weather Island. Yeah, you need the all access subscription to it, even though I'm supposed to be on the seven day trial. Uh, I canceled my subscri subscription again, but that is pretty much it. And you have a compass here. Uh, it shows you the speed, but it doesn't show you your elevation, your heading, or your heading only versus a compass, really. You can't move that. So nothing really much to do here. Let's now have a look into Avenza Maps. You open the application and you see the map screen. I already have some maps installed. But the first thing what you want to do is pretty much here create yourself an account. If you purchase maps and you would like to download them, you also do that from here. You go on the purchase history and then you see what you have installed. And I probably have one which is not installed. No, I have everything installed now. I oh, know here. So I just click on install and then it will download the map. It is important to keep the app open and ideally also have a reasonable internet connection. You see it downloading here at the bottom. This is the map I just downloaded and here see the French line, Simpson Desert. As you see when we pinch and zoom it is quite a bit smoother and has far less drawing issues. 
To change your zoom level, you can do that via two options. You can do it like with all other maps via pinch and zoom, but you can also, so two uh, with two fingers, double tap, I'm fully zoomed out now, we'll zoom out. Single finger, just click on where what you want to see. Pretty neat feature, I really like that. If I want to zoom out, I just tap with two fingers. So pretty nice. Let me quickly show you how you would purchase maps or download any of the free maps. You click on the store icon and then you can either go via find maps, recently added, popular, say if we go by popular, um, you can go by title, popularity or date. You see there are quite a few maps. Um, keep in mind, uh, Venza map is a worldwide application, so you get maps from anywhere. So Easier probably it is to go find maps, which brings up a map, and then you pretty much can see every blue dot is a map available. And as you can see here, you know, 149, then these are free. So there's really a huge variety of maps available to purchase and free. Let's have a look what we have in the high country, for example. So you can also filter. If you click on top here, you can filter. So for example, we could only look for free maps. So now it will only show the free maps and the filter, you see that little funnel on top and that pretty much shows the filter. You could also here further narrow down your search, aeronautical, I don't need educational history. I don't need thematic. Um, yeah, so many different options. So then let's, go out of the map store and let me show you around here. So we go to my maps and say we choose the Hema Simpson Desert here. Again, I zoom in a bit. If I now would like to create a waypoint, I click on the little icon here on the bottom and that opens up, they call it place marker, waypoint or pin. Everyone calls it a bit different and I can change the name. I can choose a symbol and it actually shows you your recent selection. So that's pretty good. So if you use, you know, the same four or five symbols, they're all there because if you actually click, that wasn't supposed to happen. So if you actually click on these, you can choose between all the symbols. Here on top, you actually also have the um, option to add your own symbols, so which is great uh, from a file. So you could create your own set of symbols. I really like that and something I was missing in the other software. Uh, we can add a picture to it, an image, so you can take a photo of the location. You can put a description in. Yeah, that gives you plenty of space here, which is good. Uh, it shows the time when you created it, which is quite handy. So you know when you were there. Sometimes that can be helpful. And you have the location. So submit. And here it is. If we want to move it, we just tap on the icon. Then we can move it around with a finger. Let it go where we want it. And it settles pretty accurate. If I click on the symbol on the far left, the little triangle or arrow, it brings me back to my current location as long as it's on that map. You see here in the middle it says not on map um, because I'm in Sydney now. It can't uh, show me that on the map from the Simpson Desert here. Right on top you see the heading, the bearing, 266 degrees west. What we can do here is we can slide up and that shows us all the GPS information. So move a bit around. It shows me the coordinates here. If I click on the coordinates, I can choose between all different formats for the coordinates. If I swipe up, I get more options. I see all the GPS information, the current speed, the altitude, uh, all the telemetry of um, yeah what's going on. I can go to tracking. 
from here if I click on the green button a track will start a track log will be created obviously I'm not moving so that doesn't work I can pause it here or stop it altogether and then I also have navigation so I can navigate to a place mark uh, to a project destination or to coordination yeah I really like how this works on Avenza map so you can enter coordinates and just navigate to the coordinates it's not turn by turn navigation but it will tell you direction heading time ETA and so on you can navigate to a place mark which is great that you can do that from here so you can choose one of the landmarks for example and then it will take a little bit because I have no reception in here but it will take you then the distance uh, the speed uh, the ETA so the bearing pretty cool I reckon and to a project destination where you can pretty much as I understand it lock your compass and just go by a bearing um, but you need to tell how far that is away um, yeah pretty cool I haven't seen that on any other of the apps then on the bottom right we see the layers and the placements so you can create multiple layers you can assign layers to a specific map or in general you can share layers with people so again it's really a professional app and and has a lot of functionality i think the army is using it and a lot of uh, forestry departments and that's not in australia that's worldwide uh, or army in the in the us as far as i know you can share them you can download them so that's pretty cool on the far right you see three dots so that gives you further options for example say I want to know how long that leg is I'm gonna click on draw and measure I gonna use this tap on it and then go up to here and I see that is 37,000 meters I probably can change that here line units say we're gonna do let's do kilometers that makes it a bit easier so 37 kilometers from here to here I think that is a pretty handy feature to be honest there are new options here which I haven't played around with it again can't show me where I am so from here it also I can bring me back to my location I guess that reverses it here yep and again I want to now know from here to here so let's see how long that is uh, that's one fifty one kilometers so yeah pretty good feature and works much better than for example in map maps from here I can also record and stop recording it just opens up this we've seen that before navigate to a destination find something by coordinates so here you could copy and paste or enter coordinates that's good to have if someone gives you some coordinates for a location you can enter that done uh, open v open view in map app and plot a photo not sure what that does so that will show oh, that's also quite handy so that will show it then in apple maps that's actually quite nice So you can actually touch that line and delete that again, for example, or, you know, name it, change the style, add a picture to it. But yeah, pretty good functionality. Sorting through your maps from uh, my maps, you have a search and a filter. So for example, if I'm going to put in Simpson, then and it is predictive search so I just put in SIM and then we have Simpson Desert all the different maps that's great and you also have if you click on that three line you can show particular category of maps active maps inactive maps not sure what that means um, imported maps you could import maps as well several options for example 
iTunes, okay, from storage location, and that includes then, you know, on my iPad, iCloud Drive, Drive, uh, quite neat, that uh, very easy to import uh, maps, which are in the correct format. I imported one of the rooftop maps. Unfortunately, it's not correctly set up, so it doesn't show you your location and so on, but, and it tells me here that it doesn't, uh, can't detect coordinates. However, still I have the map here, so, and could certainly look stuff up. Let me show you how you can create collection of maps, which then allows you to zoom in and out among these collections. This is a pretty cool feature I wished, for example, mud maps would have. You pretty much click on edit and then you see the menu on top where you then can click on plus and you can create a folder or collection. I already created a new collection which you see here on top which is canning and that is empty. So now I select all the maps which relate to the canning and click on move into the canning collection. Then I click done and that's it. I show you how that works into the desert. I did a desert collection. So if I click on the biggest map here, which is the Hema Central Australia, you see in the top right corner all the overlaying maps. So this is the pretty um, big Hema Central Australia map. So that doesn't really go into too much detail. But if I now zoom in, you will see it changes to the Hema Simpson Desert map automatically and I can zoom in. If I go even further, it goes to the next higher resolution app. So that is pretty cool. And you see on the legend uh, on the top left on which map I currently am. So if I'm going to zoom out again, switching now to the Great Desert Trek Southeast and it shows you which map. If I scroll up, it switches to Great Desert Treks Northeast. So that is actually an awesome feature. Um, that is great. Having just returned from the Canning Stock Route where I tested um, all the mapping applications again, I found a few little things in uh, Avenza which I really would like they uh, would change. One of them is that once you have tracking enabled, it takes up roughly one fifth of um, the available map space and that is far too much. I think the whole layout of the bottom bar is not very well designed. I also found myself that quite often when trying to actually center me back on my location, which won't work because I'm not there anymore. I accidentally touched the pin and created a pin. So I reckon for use on the road, both of that buttons are far too small, especially if you consider how much space is available and they should be spaced out a little bit better. It also would be good if these bottom bar could be collapsed altogether. I actually did not end up tracking with Avenza because I couldn't uh, remove that bar. One thing which took me a while to figure out is that the map screen here, you can increase it. If you swipe to the right, you decrease it if you swipe to the left. And if you swipe once more, then it tucks on the side here. That's actually pretty good. However, I have to say I did not figure that out on the track when driving and sometimes I had all these screen space taken up here and I, I somehow could not uh, reduce it again. So yeah, that is just something worthwhile noticing. I also would wish that if you have collections here, you can have only maps um, in one collection. and. I found, um, yeah, that's not a good system. I would have liked to have set up two or three uh, different collections with different maps in, even for the same area. Uh, and some maps would be overlying. For example, one issue I had quite often, I'm using mainly the Canning Stock Route um, 
app here. But as soon as I scroll in further, it would go then down to this map here, which I didn't like. So I would have loved to set up um, another collection where I have the canning and some of the associated bigger maps, but not the smaller map. But that is not really possible. So if I just want to use the canning stock route map, I would have to take it out of that collection, put it singly, and then I can only use that map, which yeah, I didn't find that um, helpful, to be honest. Let's have a look at the Avenza Maps version history. And as we can see here, the development actually has increased with the, the maturity level of the app and not decreased like with any other of the apps. So a lot of work has been put in here, as you can see. And yeah, I really like over the past two years, there have been a lot of changes and features and updates. It really shows the commitment there. So that is a quick rundown of Avenza Maps. I will use it now a bit more and uh, see how it goes in regards to stability and so on. But so far, it seems the, the best and smoothest app in regards to scrolling and how it behaves in general. As you see, there's very little redrawing issues. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Let's have a quick look at Memory Maps. Memory Maps is the oldest navigation software on iOS, as far as I know. It's nine years old. The HEMA 4 Wheel Drive app is actually licensed from Memory Maps, as far as I know. Memory Maps doesn't really come with the HEMA 4 Wheel Drive pack of um, maps, so you will need to purchase every map individually. It has, though, a very broad base map of Australia. One of the benefits I see in memory maps now that they have an Apple Mac desktop app where you can do your route planning and uh, you can do track logs, pins and can then share that with your uh, iOS app. That is pretty neat. Let me quickly show you memory maps. However, it is pretty much the same application as the HEMA for wheel drive apps. It only doesn't come with any of the HEMA maps. It just comes with a standard Australia base map, um, but nothing else. You can purchase all the individual HEMA maps. However, if we gonna have a look here with memory maps, you will need to purchase all maps separately and that really adds to the cost and is overall, if you need all maps, more expensive than the HEMA for wheel drive app. However, you have the benefit of the Mac and Windows desktop application, which really is great, I reckon, to plan routes uh, from home and on your big uh, screen. On my 27 inch screen, it, it really makes it very easy to um, create a new route. Functionality wise, the memory map apps is the same as the previously reviewed HEMA for wheel drive app. So please refer back to part one of my review. Let me give you a quick overview of the Apple Mac desktop application. Any map purchased for your desktop uh, application or your iPad, you can then use on the desktop. That means you have the same maps for navigation and planning. If we have a look at the version history here, we see that that is pretty much in line with the HEMA for wheel drive app. Not too much has happened there, but this is the oldest app of all of them. So it was uh, released the first and it had a fairly active version history in the beginning. But then like all other apps, excluding Avenza maps, that has reduced um, as more mature the app became. So 
So let me do a direct map comparison of the different maps in the different applications. Some of them will be the same, some of them will be different. This is now memory maps and memory maps kindly donated me quite a few maps so that I can do this review because I didn't want to purchase them again. Um, I thought I downloaded them. I put the iPad in airplane mode to simulate uh, a desert crossing where we don't have a reception and I settled on Birdsville. So at present I'm using here the HEMA Explorer 150,000K map and just show you how that looks if I zoom in and out. I think again the contrast if you zoom further out it's not that great. Um, I don't know why there's nothing else coming. I have to zoom out further. Yeah. So, Birdsville, sit still. No, that's a 1 million map now. Okay. So, the zooming, I guess, works. That is now the Outback Queensland map. That's actually good uh, to see this map. Easy to recognize all the features. While if I go to the Explorer map, yeah, to find Birdsville now here again. Up here we are. Okay, I guess that gives you a good idea here of memory maps. Let's now go to Avenza and I'm using the Central Australia map, but I have set up a collection here for the Red Center and Simpson and will be able to easy scroll in and out there. So here my Central Australia and this is Birdsville. That are all the HEMA maps which you also would need to purchase um, extra. They do not come with application. So again I think that is a map which is very easy to read. You know where you are. It has all the important information. If we zoom in a bit closer, we'll go to the next map. Now it's the Hema Great Desert Tracks Northeast. And you see that we have um, the QAA, the French, we have the Madigan on here. If I zoom in further, let me see where it brings me. It brings me on the Hema Simpson Desert 500k map. That's a QAA line here. Birdsville. Yeah, scrolling and everything is very smooth. Definitely best behaving app, in my opinion. So, yeah, that is Avenza Maps. Let's now have a look at Mud Maps. I'm using the Simpson Desert Edition 2 map. I can't zoom in here to the next map, so I would need to swap the maps manually. Could go the Geoscience Birdsville map, which places me out of view here. Again, redrawing and everything, as you can see, it's quite a bit different to uh, Venza or also memory maps. So that is a mud map app, Birdsville, not sure what app that really is. But yeah, you see the tracks, now it ends here then. It's a desert parks of South Australia map. Can you see that redrawing issues? That's far more prevalent than at any of the other apps. Simpson Desert, yeah. But I guess that gives you a good idea. Hema Explorer. Yeah, Hema Explorer, I actually searched for Birdsville. And strangely, it puts Birdsville in the middle of the desert. 
not sure why that is. So anyway, Birdsville is somewhere down here. Again, you see the redrawing issue. The maps I have selected here is Hema Explorer and Hema Road Atlas. Let me see what I find here more. I don't really find anything more suitable, I guess. Maybe the Hema Topo Atlas. But again, the now the, yeah. I just, if, if him, I would fix it, but yeah, that's just not for me, that app. Now you, you seem to find, need to find exactly the right um, zoom level the app is happy with. So it shows a Madigan. Yeah, it has all the important tracks and so on on there. But again, functionality wise, the redrawing issues. Um, yeah, make up your own mind, but I don't like it. Billy Goat. Billy Goat Birdsville here based on the open street map. So really, it's not a four wheel drive map at all. In overview, you hardly see anything. Um, now you can't even see Birdsville. So if we go closer now, it becomes a bit better. You know, on a street level, I reckon it's fine. If you, if you use open maps for cities or so, that's fine. But again, every time you zoom in to see something close up, all the fonts and everything become smaller, which yeah, now that is fine here, but that is such uh, zoomed in so much, not really usable for the outback. Um, yeah, the tracks, they're probably somewhere there, but I have to zoom in again to a super high resolution. Uh, yeah, that's here, the QA line now. Yeah, the Madigan, for example, up here doesn't exist. Yeah, map wise, I personally, I do not like that map at all. So it's not something I would use. But again, guys, maybe you enjoy it. And yeah, that, that is perfectly fine, obviously. Hema for wheel drive apps. That is the Hema for wheel drive app. Obviously here we have all the speciality maps. So I use the Hema Simpson Desert, one to 500,000. Um, and yeah, no redrawing issues. That works very well. I zoom a bit out. It again probably switches to the 1.1 million which it does, that's all how it should behave. Yeah, Madigan is on there. And even if you zoom out, you have a good overview, you know, where there are tracks and then you can zoom in. Uh, you have good features there to orientate yourself. I just came back from one month on the Kenning stock route, which gave me a great chance to again test all the applications um, before I give you my final verdict for each of the individual mapping applications. Memory Maps it is the longest app on the market uh, for over nine years now. It is pretty well developed, it's stable, and has the big benefit of having a Macintosh and a Windows application, which really eases the route planning and research because you can do that all on your home Mac or PC. However, it doesn't come with any usable maps by default, but the application is free. You can purchase um, the whole set of HEMA maps, 
but at the end it will end up a little bit dearer than purchasing the HEMA for wheel drive app. So if you need the feature to plan your tracks or your routes on the computer, then I would say start with uh, memory maps. The HEMA for wheel drive app, which is based on memory maps, so same features and so on, um, is on the market for seven years. It cost $99 one off price, so there is no subscription and it comes with a full set of HEMA maps. So value for money, I think uh, the best app still and my go-to app. Feature-wise though, it really shows its age and some of the new competitors like Avenza Map or even HEMA Explorer um, offer far better features. So I wish that the HEMA for wheel drive app would be updated a bit more and would get a few of the modern features. It is probably my pick of the litter uh, if you like an app which has already the most maps included and you just download the maps and get going. HEMA Explorer. To be honest, I used the HEMA Explorer on one of my iPads now for the whole trip and have gotten to like it a bit more, especially when only using two maps and uh, fairly zoomed in. I didn't have many of the issues on the canning, which I mentioned beforehand. However, as soon as we went back to a broader scale and went out of the Simpson and I had a big state overview, uh, the issues in the HEMA Explorer um, started to pop up again. I still think for $49 a year um, with the maps which I included, it is a great package. Um, once you know how to use it and the little quirks that you don't have too many maps uh, layered on top of each other and so on, it's certainly a workable application. And I think for someone who just wants to purchase something, um, download the maps and get going without uh, many advanced features like importing your own maps and so on, um, it is a very good application. If HEMA manages to fix the bugs, um, it would be pretty much uh, head on with Avenza Maps. MapMaps 3 was released three years ago and always used to be my go-to app for the Victorian High Country, which I really love and have done over 12 trips there by now. However, over the past two years it has received very little updates and pretty much zero new features besides some two very small updates. Given the stability issues, the redrawing issues, I can't really recommend MudMap 3 at this stage. I really wish the developer would put a bit more effort in it and uh, fix the existing bugs and put some new features in. Billy Goat is a single map application which is based on the OpenStreetMap, which really is a free map and um, is not really suited for four-wheel driving in my opinion. Paying $70 a year for a free map um, and very few features, I can't really see me doing that. Uh, given the poor contrast of the map, the lack of tracks, um, the zooming in features, I don't think Billy Gold really, for me at this stage, is a contender uh, as a serious mapping software. Avenza Maps. Avenza Maps, I have to say, um, when using it now, it is a great application, but I think it is more suited for a professional, for someone who needs a lot of features. I found then when using tracking that a fifth of the screen is obscured by the bottom bar which can't be minimized any further. That is something which annoyed me a little bit. Also the icons to set a pin or to um, recenter your location are very close together and I found myself in the car many many times um, creating a pin when really all I wanted to do is um, recenter my location on the map. Um, the application never crashed on me in the four weeks. 
but it sometimes uh, showed a little bit strange behavior um, where it went all round and round after I changed the location to north up. Um, however, a restart uh, did fix it. So I still think Avenza is a great app and uh, it certainly is the most developed app which gets a lot of updates. There are still a few things they can improve but I would more recommend it for someone really who wants to upload his own maps and really is into the off-road navigation and, and wants the most features possible because it will take some time to uh, source uh, appropriate maps, download the maps, purchase them, installing them. Um, it, it definitely has a steeper learning curve than other apps. So which app would I recommend? To be honest, it really depends on where your focus is and what are the most important features for you. Personally, I will continue using HEMA Explorer, the HEMA for Wheel Drive app and Avanza Maps as my three main maps. And I will swap between them depending on what I'm after. For tracking, I will quite likely uh, continue using the HEMA Explorer app. Um, for New South Wales, um, with my New South Wales topo maps, I will use uh, the HEMA for Wheel Drive app, as well as for big overview view of Australia or a whole state. And Avenza map, I really uh, will use uh, for everything when I do not track, uh, unless they fix the one fifth track bar at the bottom. It's not really usable for me for tracking, but obviously it's great that I can import other maps there and um, use a lot of speciality maps. So really, look at all the features, see what is most important for you, and then uh, purchase the appropriate mapping software. Memory maps, HEMA Explorer, HEMA for Wheel Drive app, or Avenza map, in my book, you can't really go wrong with any of that four applications. Thank you so much for watching. If the video helped you to make a decision what is the right for wheel drive mapping software for you, please hit the subscribe button, like the video, and I'm very keen to hear what you use as a mapping software. Do you still use paper maps or are you also fully digital? And let me know if there's any application out there I missed. As I mentioned before, Everything I do on All of Road is self-funded. Um, there is no big sponsors, there is no monthly income stream, and it takes a lot of time and effort to put these reviews together. So if you like to support me, please um, go over to Patreon and become my Patreon supporter. For $5 a month, um, you really help me recover some of my costs, and you will also receive all my videos a few days earlier before they're officially released on YouTube. Thanks a lot and hope to see you around the tracks.